Moving forward to our next session, which will be based on an in-depth conversation on the topic, the cultural narrative of Bangladesh. The session will be moderated by Sanjida Tonni, Communication and Community Lead, Wagely. And the other discussants are Ms. Nazia Andali Prima, Visual Artist, Director, Bangladesh Brand Forum, President, Women in Leadership, Founder, Bangladesh Creative Forum, and Mr. Rahat Ahmed, Founding Partner and CEO of Anchorless Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. A very good afternoon, everyone. Primapu, Rahat, thank you so much for your time today and participation in this discussion, the radical cultural movement. Culture, as we know and understand in Bangladesh, is a beautiful blend of uh. our history, our roots, literature, art, and so much more. And now this narrative is 50 years old. And it must and does include the development of our journey and the experiences that we have had and want to make. I would like to actually begin by trying to understand the perspective from both of you, of course, and understand what do we how do we define radical movement for nation branding? Primapu, I would like you to begin this first. Thank you, Sanjita. So great to be here and great to see you both. Uh, radical movement. I'm an, uh, I am a visual artist and uh, radical word is a very important word for me because the previous session was a great opening for this session because there are few words that I pick from the previous session that is connection, that is somewhat soul, emotion, very important. So for a nation like Bangladesh, what we are for, what we were best at, very emotional. So as an artist, I am definitely very emotional. I practice imagination and that is my core. And I think imagination is very powerful. So imagination lead us to the future while we, were, we are in the present and respecting our past. So connecting these three actually be, uh, be, make us what we want to thrive to be. So how it happened, and that is the radical movement to me. So how it happened, the movement, because if we connect, we talk about connection, but from my point of view, I've been here uh, like since ever. It took a far sir Bolchiloje. We are we we live in such a close proximity, but we hardly know each other. That is the problem. We don't know what our neighbor is doing. Yeah, we don't really care about what others are thinking. So we don't actually, at the end, have connection. We had, I see it in my grandparents' era, they had connection. But slowly, slowly, we are losing it out. So if we lose our strength, if we lose our strong bit, how can we be a nation that we could be proud of? So that's where I come in, and that's what my practice, and that's what I believe. That's why I do radical movement through my art, through my words, and through my belief. And that's what I reflect on. So I started 25 years back my artistic practice. When I went to Dhaka Art College, Charu Kolajita, so our academic books or training guideline was so much European that I can't tell. So they practice European gharana of art form, which is very abstract, which is very surreal, which is very not Bangladeshi, definitely. So when I was a child, my parents gave me the privilege to go to Jago Art Center for learning dancing, Chaya not to learn uh, 
music, classical, polli giti, lalon giti, bhavaiya, rabindra shongit, what not. And then we went to art, art, not training, but we were enthusiasts of art and artist. But then later when I go to art college, it's all about practicing European art. I remember Zainu Labedin, Amadeh Shilpacharchu, and I love his work and believe specially. He used to say, I heard it from other artists, my teachers, he used to say, Jedin Bangladesh Manush Mati Bujbe, Bujbo, Ni Maiman Singh, Jedin Bangladesh Shab Bujbo. So, Sheikh Kothata could be important. We don't understand our soil. I spend a lot of money buying oil colors from Europe, America because it's not very available here. But we never use our soil. We never use our technology. We don't know how to make it a very usable material for artists or any kind of color or a pigment. I did some vegetable dyeing workshop. We, do, we have so many vegetables. We could use it, transfer it into a lot of sustainable color, but we never did. Ceramic, pottery, other elements of Bangladesh totally lose it, loses away, gone away, because we never nurtured this. We are more into European practice. We, are, uh, we love to mimic. So we love to say, a oh, lot of people ask me, Prima, why don't you wear sari? I said, it's, it's not about wearing sari. It's about believing in the notion of Bangladeshi. So we have to understand what we are doing and what we are trying to believe and how we are reflecting. We have to have an overall connection to see, believe, and do, and then become the original Bangladeshi. Thank you so much. Um, same question to Rahat. What, in your perspective, is radical movement for nation branding? Thank you. Um, I guess for some context, um, it, what I do is uh, I run a venture capital fund out of New York City that only invests in Bangladesh. My investors are primarily 99% Americans and Europeans. My job is to sell the Bangladesh story to people who may not know where it is on the map. For that to happen, it can't all be about numbers. It has to be about a narrative that gels with them. For a lot of investors, the numbers are nice, but they also want to be able to sit at a dinner table amongst their friends and say, hey, you know, I invested in something, and that country gave me a good return, but I also know these founders. They're amazing, and, and they're doing great things. Why don't we talk about this country more? The narrative of Bangladesh historically has been built heavily on you know, not, not the good things. Um, you know, we are a country that has been born out of blood in many capacity, but that doesn't mean that's only what we should talk about. We have founders who are Bangladeshi American who are raising 10 million, tens and millions of dollars. We have Bangladeshis here who are raising hundreds of millions of dollars. The biggest disconnect we have in our cultural narrative is the diaspora not knowing what's going on here and us not knowing what is happening in the diaspora. And one of the best ways we can actually move forward in actually solving this problem, and this in turn overflows into the rest of the world, is connecting the dots by controlling our, me our own media narrative. For instance, if you go to the NewYorkTimes.com right now, you type in Bangladesh, 19 of the 20 stories will be negative stories. Why? Because the New York Times does not run out of Dhaka. It does not run out of our people's storytelling. It's somebody else telling the story on behalf of us. This is also a country, and I say this as somebody who has moved back here after 30 years, so I am part of that diaspora group. This is still a country where we are still depending on others for validation. We are looking for awards in Europe and America instead of simply looking at our neighbors and saying, hey, you know what, what you just did made my life significantly better. And I'm not saying it just because Asif Bhai and Tamara are here, but you know, the work Bragg has done has single-handedly improved the brand equity of Bangladesh around the world. So when I think about a radical change, it's the mentality of Bangladeshis.
to believe in ourselves more than ever. I'm going to put it in this way. I, I talked to somebody recently about opening up a Fuchka stand in Manhattan. We don't have one. Fuchka's awesome. I think, I hope nobody here is going to disagree with me. So, and the person told me, well, it's Fuchka. Fuchka is a street snack. Why would an American want Fuchka? And my response was simple. Fuchka tastes good. And if it tastes good, people should want it. And if we don't know how good our own culture is, why would others actually believe it? So we need to firm up our own belief in order to build a brand. Thank you so much, Rahat. I think that was very interesting, and I actually have a follow-up question to that. But before, before we move on to that, I would come back to Primap and ask, uh, especially where Rahat mentioned about storytelling. Do you think we as a nation are not good storytellers to the globe? What's your take on that? Hmm. That's a very critical question. Uh, storytelling is important. Um, I always say that when I see myself, I see Bangladesh. How I, why I say that? Because I couldn't really create my story in my art. Why I say that? It, was, it is a process. It, I'm always in an experimentation. So, so we are as a nation, yeah? So we are trying to understand what we are actually. So as Rahat just mentioned, that just right there, our story is just here, but we search it so much far away. So sometimes we miss the real story, which is right next to us, but we search it for from somewhere else. So I think storytelling is a, is itself is an art, and Bangladeshis are a big storyteller. But we just don't know that we are a big storyteller. So it is not knowing. We don't believe ourselves that we could be a great storyteller. How come that nation cannot be a storyteller? But when we go somewhere to tell story, maybe we don't believe that we can tell story. There is something that, when I see Hollywood movie, I watch Hollywood movie, I say, they captured the emotion, but we are in that emotion, you know? So they capture it and they project it in a very nice way. Their skill is very good, but our skill is not good. It is kind of dichotomy that when we do it, we are very good at it, but when we do it for a reason, we are not that great at it. That is also a very sweet thing because as a nation, we are very soulful, we are very emotional, so we don't understand how to, to project it in a way that people would buy it, you know? So we need to learn how to make it sellable or make belief that we could be brand out of doing this. So it's kind of a thin line in between that what we project and what we tell. So we have, to, we, it has to be, it's, it's actually like a uh, just a position that what we do, that we say. So that's how we create one and one story. I think that's how we could tell story and to true to be our soul and to, to, true to be ourselves and believe that each of us a story, a story of Bangladesh. Huh? So this is a lot about having that confidence within ourselves as well to be able to tell our own stories in a manner where the way we mention it, people take it in that perspective. Yeah, own it. Actually. Yeah, we own it. So Picking, linking it up with that follow-up question I had, Rahat, you have been the, a, a very core part of the diaspora for a very long time of your life. And now you are here in Bangladesh. So from that perspective of the Bangladeshi diaspora outside, how do you, or let me, let me rephrase the question. What I would like to ask is your two cents in identifying 
the core state where we are as a nation so that we work on nation branding and also at the same time, the storytelling of this nation. Uh, I'm going to start with something that you guys might find funny or offensive, but I'm going to say it anyway. When I have an interview with somebody and they show up 15 minutes late and they say, oh, I had traffic. Last time I checked, Jakarta has traffic. Beijing has traffic. Manila has traffic. That does not keep somebody from Jakarta, Manila, or Beijing from sending a message 20 minutes before and saying, hey, I'm running 15 minutes late. We are a country that accepts excuses. And if we accept excuses, we are already falling behind. This is the branding that actually does go over to America and Europe for our diaspora. Um, as the previous panelists had said, a lot of diaspora historically has come to Bangladesh. And we're frustrated that the processes were not ideal. Now, that's okay. You know, we are here to learn and work with everybody. But that doesn't mean that we ourselves shouldn't hold up our neighbors to a higher standard. Bangladesh has gone from a country of 300 GDP per capita to 2,000. That was amazing, but that was the easy part. You could do that through labor arbitrage and some other things. But as we go up the value chain, where as we compete in the service industry, we cannot afford such things. We need to be able to send a calendar invite. We need to be able to show up on time. We need to be able to spell properly and have the ideal grammar for the people that we are pitching to. This is important because capital at the end of the day is globally competitive. When we are out there trying to raise capital for Bangladesh, our, our startups, our, our, our conglomerates, everybody. The investor in London or Hong Kong does not wake up in the morning and say, hey, I am going to invest in Bangladesh. They say, I am going to invest in what I think is the best return for my capital. And they're going to get pitched by companies from Pakistan, from Hong Kong, from Vietnam. Our standards have to be at that level. And that also goes for our people. Because if we had, by the way, we have, I think, 500 Buet grads working in Silicon Valley right now, if we want them to come back, we need to give them the same exact package. We say, hey, listen, we're going to make sure that you get the cup of coffee that you want, that your children are going to go to the school that they deserve. This is all part of our larger storytelling. Our identity is global, but that doesn't mean that our people everywhere will settle for the same standards, because maybe their standards have been elevated elsewhere. So, I, you know, I, I think our branding and storytelling goes hand in hand with a couple of things. One is, you know, these are, these are kind of logistical standards. The other thing is what I think Korea has done incredibly, incredibly well is mind share. And I think, you know, APA has some thoughts on this, but I'll, I'll say this part. You know, when, when a New Yorker or a Londoner, a non-Bangladeshi, hears the word Bangladesh, I, I, I want a world where they think about an amazing Bangladeshi pop star, or Fuchka, or you know, the, the, the latest movie that's coming out. Because when somebody says Korea now, they don't think about shipbuilding or career war. They think about K-pop. They think about Parasite, the Oscar-winning movie, not actual Parasites. Um, that narrative changes how the world looks at us and how we ourselves look at us. And what that does economically, I think, is really, really important because it changes the valuation of how the country is perceived. You know, the same company in Vietnam that generates a million dollars in revenue is worth $5 million. The exact same industry in Bangladesh with a larger economy is probably worth $3 million. That is more about perception than reality. And branding is perception. Thank you so very much. That was strong. That came out well and very strong. I will actually... Uh, place another very out of the box, but very in blend question as well, especially because we were mentioning the nation branding. What does the notion or how would you present yourself as a Bangladeshi or a Bangladi or a Bengali? Bangladeshi, you know, born in Mohammedpur, raised in Shidoshari, somehow ended up in Texas and New York, but <laughs> hey, will a slow flower forever? Rimapu, what about you? Bangladeshi, Bengali, Bengali. Bangladeshi, Bengali. I think 
think that's what I'm going to choose. If I ask you why Bangladeshi and Bengali, how, how would you define these two? Because I think I'm a Bangla Nari, so I will really choose Bangla, Bangladeshi, yeah. Uh, I personally have a very different perspective to it. I'm, definitely, we all have that. For example, since I grew up elsewhere too, whenever I was asked if I'm Bangladeshi or Bengali, my, my first answer as well was Bangladeshi because I have been away from the culture, understanding the roots, never really studied it as well. So all these years in Bangladesh, I think I'm still struggling to call myself Bengali properly because I'm still accepting, still learning every day what my culture is, what... I'm supposed to be as a Bengali myself. So I think it's a learning on the process, learning on the go for us to be calling ourselves Bengali. Um, I, I, let's, let's move on to the next question from here. So Rahat, um, after coming to Bangladesh, what were some of the missing links you think you could identify, especially seeing it from the international perspective? somewhere from a global perspective, some uh, links that should be supporting Bangladesh to move ahead in the development the way we want to see it. I, I think Nassim Bhai in the last panel mentioned something that, that I've been working a lot on, and it's in the garments industry. Um, I think last year Bangladesh exported about $35 billion in garments. Um, one of the largest clients for Bangladeshi garments companies in the world is Zara. Zara's market valuation is $100 billion. So Zara is worth three times what we export in a year. Yet, if you walk into a Zara store, probably 40% of their clothing is made in Bangladesh. There are probably about six different stages of value in the garments chain, and Bangladesh accounts for roughly 20% of it. But if you remove Bangladesh from the equation, Zara probably can't deliver to their stores in the next month. What does that say? We are not moving up the value chain. This is a constant problem I am seeing in garments, in technology, and in other areas where we make something and then we hand it off to our client in the West. There is no reason that Bangladesh can't build a brand like, say, Love Bonito, which comes out of Singapore and Indonesia, which has raised $80 million to sell clothing branded by themselves to anywhere in the world. I think the day garments companies in Bangladesh wake up and say, you know what, we can build our own brand, we can do our own distribution, the wealth in Bangladesh will skyrocket, but more importantly, the world will start realizing how much they depend on us. Pimapu, how do you perceive this missing, these missing links, also the ones that Rahat mentioned over here, how would you address them and rectify them? I think it's, uh, it's from the core sense of it. If we sense it, sense, I mean, Bangla is a very deep culture, yeah? So from the sense, from the notion of it, we can understand that how to rectify it, yeah? So it is not, uh, it, it cannot, you will not find it in a book. It's not written anywhere. Every day, the way you mentioned that how you struggle with uh, your identity and how I struggle when I paint, that how do I portray Bangladesh in our art? How? A contemporary Bangladesh, what is it? What is a modern Bangladesh? Previous panelists, they were talking about uh, our history. We need our history to understand, to project our now Bangladesh. So how we connect the dots to come here and say what we are. So it's a deep thinking, again, from senses, belief, reflection, understanding, storytelling. So a lot of component is there and we have to really tap into those one by one, and then play together to get to the core. Hmm? Speaking of which, um, culture being one of those components, as an artist, 
as from an artist's point of view, how can we how can we tap into that cultural aspect of on the diaspora? Culture is very important. Everywhere I see culture. I mean, the way we talk, the way we walk, it's culture. As I said, that we always try to find it somewhere else, but it's within us. We are all a component of Bangla culture. We are all Bangladeshis. We don't really say it. We, we have to own it, and we, are, we just tap it right there, right? The way, like, I have to say a story that I do a lot of residency program all over the world for my art practice. Whenever I go any residency, they always, like, especially European people, always tell me that, oh, when you talk, you always move a lot. So that's why people got so attracted to you. Well, Bangladeshi women move a lot. They always talk with the choke, language. It is within us. If we try to forget it, we're going to lose our connotation of being a Bangladeshi. We don't really have to follow anybody. What we are, we are already Bangladeshi because we are here. We practice our practice, our every day, what we do, how we think, the process that we do the whole thing, practice it. So it is all Bangladeshi. We don't need to see it. When we want to see it, grab it from other place, we miss the point. So I think it is important that we, we just already Bangladeshi. We just have to see it, see us carefully. No? Uh, this was a very individualistic approach. This could be a very, this is supposed to be a very individualistic approach as a Bangali, as a Bangladeshi. So taking that, uh, Rahat, so this cultural brand and narrative when we want to put it out, when we should be, uh, the way we should be putting it out, what would be some tools and methods you would suggest that we should be using or tapping into to have these cultural branding and narrative outside? I think exporting culture is paramount to the success of Bangladesh over the next decade. Um, I think Thailand does something really fascinating with their food. So if anybody's been to America and been to a Thai restaurant, chances are almost, you've noticed almost all the menus are the same. That's because the Thai government effectively subsidizes people to open Thai restaurants in the US, right? They have a set menu, they have set ingredients, and so that's effectively you know, what we're considering gastro diplomacy. And it's because they use food as a way to get people to think about Thailand in a different way. That is a tool. You know, in Bangladeshi Kawa, you know, we can, we can package kachi biryani or, or chotpoti or whatever, and we can sell it across countries. And so it gets on the news, and this is this cool new thing you can come and try and tell your friends about. We haven't done that yet. Film, same thing. You know, um, Korean film industry, we talk about a lot. Majority of the largest Korean films, the most successful ones early on, were all about how the country came together. You know, I'm sure we have amazing stories to tell that we haven't reached a global audience for. That's there. And then music, you know, there, there are a few, few musicians that we've been tracking in Bangladesh. You know, I, 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 I have them play for my friends in New York who are American and they can't tell it's Bangladeshi, it's just really good music. And one of the great ways you can actually get culture to spread the word of, of your country is by telling a story or type of music that resonates with them. But at the same time, it's a story about their people. Um, I think Iran did a really interesting job. There's a director, Ash, uh, Farhad Ash, uh, Ashkat Farhadi, who made a film about a divorce. And it won an Oscar. And the, the beauty of the film was it's about a divorce. And people get divorced all the way around the world. But it was a story about middle-class Iranians getting a divorce, and it was really well done. How many films do you see about middle-class Bangladeshis living normal lives that are exported out? You don't. Everything is somehow somebody in the village getting downtrodden. That's the Bangladesh that people are seeing, and we're not telling them the stories of the rest of our people. So culture is the ultimate tool, in my opinion, to really spread the mindshare. And 
for what it's worth, done in a way where the, the quality is of a certain standard, where, you know, our films have good color grading and editing, you know, our music has great sound mixing and production. And I know we're capable, because we have Bangladeshis around the world doing it. But we need to fund it ourselves because it is part of our socioeconomic growth story, as well as our global branding. This is something that we were discussing as well, that we do have the skills, we do have the talent within the country. It's just, as Apu mentioned, that individually, we are not moving forward in expressing ourselves correctly when it comes to the global diaspora. So thank you for, thank you for making that so clear. I will actually move on to a very um, specific question to you, something that you mentioned already. But... Uh, I would want to specify on that, that is, again, from a woman's perspective and an artistic perspective, do you see a unique angle for women in this narrative? Yeah, I think Bangladeshi women are a really powerful entity because our, money, well, I'm doing a project called Bangla Nari, so, Bengal, Bangladeshi women are like from seeing from Ekaturi Virangona take shurkure till now. Look at our mother, look at our grandmother, look at even us. We are mega generation, yet we own the Maya and Mamuta and love that no one could could ever possess. So Bangladeshi women are very powerful. The way they hold the values, the way they nurture, the deeper emotion, and the, the way they project themselves. It is really amazing that Bangladesh women are really a powerful entity. So they can also be there, out there, and we can tell their story as well to do nation branding. I mean, of course, I mean, two ladies sitting here who definitely do want to, are trying to tell that story out there. So hopefully, definitely we'll be joining more together. Uh, we're almost towards the end of this discussion and ending this session, I would actually like to link all our conversation that we have had uh, with one particular question that is, how do we use this cultural component as we become the emerging market and brand our nation? Would you like to go forward? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's, a, that's in many ways the most important question for a lot of the people here today. And uh, I, th I think I tapped into a few of that. Um, to, to simplify it, socioeconomic growth and culture and branding cannot exist without each other. Um, if you look at, for instance, when two, uh, two countries produce the exact same good, there is probably a slightly higher inclination to support the country that is more proud and can present itself better. And that is often a function of branding and self-confidence. And as a country, we need to be able to brand ourselves with the self-confidence and the type of standards that anybody around the world can look at and say, you know what? Made in Bangladesh is, is real. This is it. This is what we want. Um, it harkens back to one of my experiences in my past life covering tech in Asia. Um, I was shocked when I found out that Samsung TVs and Sony TVs were made in the same factory. This is around 2006. And the same TV was actually, the Samsung TV was sold for $2,500. The Sony TV was sold for $3,500. Same factory. We fast forward to 2021, Samsung TVs cost the same as Sony TVs, you know? So what has Korea done in their narrative to take the, their production, the manufacturing, the same thing that Bangladesh is amazing at, and increase the valuation and the price to match a country historically considered superior to them? This is a path that we can follow by branding the country better so that our goods demand a premium in the global market. That when a Bangladeshi walks in to an interview somewhere in London or Sydney, they're like, oh man, they must have gone to IBA or BUED or NSU. They're going to be really good. We got we to gotta hire them. 
That's part of the whole narrative. And that all feeds back into this idea of country branding. And I think the one thing that I do always think about, the idea of foreign investment sometimes is interesting because people say, well, what if a foreign company buys you? Are you still Bangladeshi? What we have learned from countries like China and India and Indonesia is that when a Bangladeshi does well, and even if they sell their company to a foreign company, more often than not, they take the capital, they take their profits, and they put it back into the country because they don't forget where they come from. And we need to support all the people who want to do that instead of saying, why are you doing that? Say, how can I help instead? Thank you so much for that personalized insight, I would call it. I mean, it's not every day that you hear that much in detail with the history linking out how do we go forward for the development. Um, this, this, I would like to end this session actually with Pimapu's remark because uh, she particularly made sure that we touch about, the, we touch the topic on the radical movement of culture. And Apu, you have the experience all around the diaspora about how culture, the radical movement of culture, his experience was amazing as we, uh, as we ended. So with your remarks, could we just end that? Just be on board and own We Are Bangladeshi. It's such a unique nation and such a unique culture that unbelievable. So more and more I dig into deep to this notion, I own it, I, I believe it, I'm so proud of it. And the possibility being Bangladeshi is enormous. I mean, we have so many possibility to become a global brand, Bangladesh, and rest will just follow us. Yeah, that's it, thank you. Thank you so much. That is the end of the session. Thanks again, Rahat, for coming here with us. Primabu, thank Thanks you so for much for me. your session and everyone for participating you, in this. Thank you both.